Hey Gender Queer Chat, Joe here. Happy Sunday. And yes, I made it. I made it back because the last time, uh, the last video I was telling you guys, I was about to go on a backpacking, uh, hiking, backpacking trip in Algonquin Park. And um, yeah, I'm still suffering. My knees are killing me. I overdid it. It's called the weekend warrior syndrome or something. Uh, my pedometer told me I did something like 13,000 steps that first day and 50 flights of stairs. Yeah, pretty much all uphill. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but it was quite steep going up on the way there and quite steep coming down on the way back, which is I think why my knees hurt on the way back, but not on the way there. But anyway, I did it. Very proud of myself. Suffering, but proud. Okay, this week's question is fantastic. I'm very excited about it. And I should have written down some notes because things were going through my mind all week that I wanted to touch on, but I'll just try and make do here. What is your favorite way of upsetting gender roles, gender bending, gender fucking? And... Most people this week, I noticed, said that they don't go out of their way to gender bend or gender fuck. They just behave as themselves. So I may be the lone one here, but I really, really, really like gender fuckery. There's nothing I like more, in fact. So I love shattering people's preconceived notions of gender, um, specifically uh, when they make presumptive, presumptuous statements towards me. I, I often correct them with a sense of complete, not exasperation, what's the word I'm looking for? I'll, I'll correct them with a with a tone in my voice like what are you stupid <laughs> like that you don't that you presume that I'm female <laughs> I'm not a describe it. Um, a good example is my name Joe uh, when they call me by my birth name I correct them and um, if they actually nine times out of ten when I tell people my name is Joe the first thing they say is oh Josephine Joanne uh, Joe you know Joe Beth they start rattling off names as if the name I just told you Joe was not my name and I look at them and I say no my name is Joe and they go oh Oh, well, isn't that a short form for something? I said, well, it's short for Joseph, I guess. <laughs> that's what I use. My, my stock answer is Joseph. Because that's what Joe is short form in the real world, right? can also be shortened from female names, but that's none of your business. <laughs> so, number one. Um, number two is ways of the hairy pits, right? Hey! Oops. Yeah, the hairy pits. I uh, haven't shaved since I was 19, and I just turned 40, so that's 21 years I have not shaved my pits. And I won't. And even though... Some strange noises out there. Even though sometimes I find it uncomfortable um, socially, you know, I can't wear certain... Well, I wouldn't want to wear those outfits anyways, but over the years, before I sort of really truly started embracing gender queerdom, there were times I would wear... Um, you know, I'd be invited to a wedding and I'd want to wear something nice. And something nice typically was something out of the women's section of the department store. And oftentimes that involved sleeveless things. And I, you know, for many, many years I just knocked out I couldn't wear sleeveless things. Now that I wear predominantly men's clothing, especially um, if I were to wear formal wear, it would definitely be men's formal wear. There is no sleeveless men's formal wear. So that kind of solved that problem on its own. But I have always, always, always had, had hairy pits for the re for many reasons, one of which is gender fuckery, which is you want to have a conversation, you want to stare at it, you want to ask me about it, you want to have a conversation, but I'm more than happy to have that conversation with you. Um, same thing with the legs. And the legs is actually much um, more prevalent because I wear shorts all summer. My job doesn't demand any sort of fancy clothing, so I wear shorts all summer. And it's very obvious. Most people can see my legs, and uh, it's funny. Most people don't say anything, but most people give a look. Um, what did I, what was the most recent thing I did? Oh, because I hurt my knees so badly hiking, I went to go get fitted for a knee brace just to, and I was talking to the lady in the store and she measured my knee and, you know, my legs are hairy and I don't have any problem with that at all. And I, I would hope that that is just a bit of a wake, wake up call for people to see that and see, okay, well, she doesn't seem to be bothered by it. So I guess I shouldn't be bothered by it either. You know, something like that. A big part of the gender fuckery with me is the attitude that I portray as I do these things or go about my my gender fucking lifestyle, right? Uh, so name, body, um, this may not be gender related, but it is sort of um, whenever people make presumptions about my marital status, because um, I work in a very, very conventional workplace. The girl that I went uh, hiking with last weekend, her name is Christine. She's a childhood friend of mine. And she's got like a, I don't know if she has a PhD, but she has several master's degrees. She's very highly educated. She walks in very educated circles. And, and I was saying to her, you know, the circles that I walk in, no one I really know has a university degree. Most most of us in my department anyway have college diplomas, which I don't know if you know, but in Canada is a two-year, and in the U.S. I know it's they call it all college. In, in Canada, university is a four-year, college is two-year. University is sort of whatever. Sorry, uh, college is always vocational, right? Like it's always tech. 
It's most more often than not tech school. So, but all the people that I know, oh, and the other one is not no no secondary education at all. Um, but almost everyone I know took their the women took their husbands' last names. That's very common in my world. And Christine was telling me no one in her world would ever dream of taking their husband's last name. That's just crazy talk. And I said, well, yeah, because you walk in completely different circles than me. So I was talking to someone at work who made some remark to me about, um, oh, because I travel extensively. And she said to me, oh, well, of course you can travel extensively. You don't have a family. I thought, well, the first thing I got was really angry. I thought, what the fuck kind of thing is that to say? And then I looked, I just snapped right up. I just snapped. I couldn't even help myself. I said, of course I have a family. I said, my family is just very understanding and accepting of the fact that I travel a lot. And you could tell she looked totally confused because in her world, a family is a husband and kids. So in her world, that's the only thing a family possibly can be. And what kind of mother would I be if I just left kids and went traveling for four months at a stretch? And so anyway, I didn't explain it and I didn't correct her because I was leaving it to her little gears to do the whining about what a family is and she can just figure that out on her own but my family is very accepting of who I am and the choices I've made in life you know um, upsetting gender roles well clothing that I wear I wear um, frequently well like a big one I've mentioned this in previous videos but um, at work uh, we had a staff meeting one time there's very few women in my department and um, my boss doesn't really talk, when he's talking to the crowd, he's talking to the guys. He's, he's not making exceptions for the women. But what he said one time at a staff meeting was that um, we all had to wear collared shirts and closed-toed shoes. That was going to be the dress code at work. And um, so the next day I wore a collared shirt and none of the women did. All the women wore tank tops, um, spaghetti straps, like they all dress like girls. And, and I was furious and I thought like what part of you're supposed to wear a collared shirt didn't you understand in that meeting? And they don't care because they think it doesn't apply to them and the boss doesn't um, he doesn't, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, he doesn't make up, uh, enforce it. But I wear a colored shirt every day of my life at work. And, um, whenever, whenever anyone asks, I always say, oh, we have to. Our boss told us we had to. And I'll say it like that to the women. And they look at me like I'm crazy. And I say, well, you know, you were in that meeting. You heard it too. Don't pretend it didn't apply to you because he never said it didn't apply to you. This kind of thing. Um, Gender bending, gender fucking. Oh, there's so many more. I wish I'd have written some of these down because they were on my mind all week. Uh, maybe I'll pause for a minute and think and I'll come right back. Okay, I'm still thinking, but um, the one that just came to me, I just hung my laundry out on the line and it's all men's underwear. I wear men's underwear and I was cracking up because I was hanging up like my bras next to the men's underwear and I'm not ashamed of that. You know what I mean? I think one of the biggest things with being gender bendy is to be very proud of who you are and um, never, ever, ever be ashamed of the things that make you who you are. Um, I recently, okay, so last weekend after my, the long stupid story, my water stopped working in this house for three days. I had no running water. I was flushing the toilet with buckets of standing rainwater from the, we have like a, several rain barrels around the house, around the ex exterior of the house. Anyway, the day we were waiting for the hydro guy to come, my neighbor and my neighbor's cousin and I were sitting on the front porch and, um, uh, yeah, I was just being myself and these guys and I were having, we're laughing our socks off and next thing you know I got stupid drunk and I never drink. I think I drink maybe five drinks a year and I drank eight drinks that night if that gives you any idea. Yeah, but we were like telling fart jokes and just being stupid, like I really truly felt like I was one of the guys and as a result, um, you know, I'm a little closer to my neighbor than I was before. He's a very quiet guy and I don't know him very well, but I just hung all my laundry back there and you know, it's gonna be kind of obvious that I wear men's underwear and I couldn't care less what he thinks, you know, what the neighbors think. Big effing deal. So, um, clothing, attitude. A lot of it is attitude and a lot of it is the way I talk. Um, I'll say things like um, a previous, sometimes I'll use the word partner or, um, you know, when referring to some people and their partners, I don't necessarily need to genderize things. And you can tell it rattles sometimes in the conversation people people are dying to know but I don't necessarily disclose because um, I kind of like that M making people aware that you don't need to know people's genders and you don't need to know people's necessarily people's relationships to one another to get the gist of the story it's very it's not necessary even though you might think it is it's not um, so I it's not game playing so much as it is introducing people who would not otherwise be introduced to these ideas in a gentle way. You know, someone like me who's pretty easy going about things. Um, I do believe I'm running out of time. I really wish I'd have written things down. Anyway, that's about it for this week. Catch you guys next week and 
Hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.